Hey guys, it's Brittany. So a little while ago, I did a video on Hahnemann's theory about miasmatic diseases. Um, his theory is a little bit different than what we often think about it today in modern homeopathy. So in that video, I sort of went into what he really meant when he was talking about miasms and his really original theory. The question I got back all the time was about the clinical significance and what it means that his theory changed our idea of totality. So today I'm going to go in a bit more into what the clinical significance is and how I think it's probably changed the profession and hopefully that'll make it a little bit clearer. Okay. So to review, Hahnemann basically thought that chronic disease was caused by three main infectious organisms and he called these things miasms. So he thought there were basically three organisms. You can think of it as three bacteria in the whole world that caused all chronic disease. This is where it gets nutty, right? I know. But this is before modern, you know, immunology and pathology and stuff, right? So um, he called these three Sora, Syphilis, and Psychosis. So he thought all three of these infections basically started that you were perfectly healthy and then you came in contact with this organism. There was a prodromal period. Then you had a skin eruption. If the skin eruption was treated badly, <laughs> like by anything other than homeopathy, it would go away, but you would essentially be in latent phase. So you would have some minor symptoms because you weren't perfectly healthy, but you were pretty fine. And then under times of stress, you would suddenly get this full blown chronic disease, right? So we can think about it as chicken, like chicken pox and shingles. Um, it's the best approximation I've been able to think of that's very similar to his idea. But so, you know, you're perfectly healthy. At 10 years old, you meet somebody with chicken pox a week later, because you've got a week of the prodromal period, right? You come out with a skin eruption, chicken pox, then it goes away. Now, in his view, that would mean like maybe you'd have minor symptoms, like you were predisposed to colds and flus. Uh, you got a chill at 7 p.m. or something, minor things. Nothing that you would be like, oh, doctor, doctor, <laughs> right? But minor things in this latent period. And then you go to college, you get super stressed, and suddenly you've got shingles, right? But in his view, instead of shingles, it'd be like, oh my God, now you have asthma. <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's basically sort of like what he thought. Now, just disregard whether or not you think it's correct or not, because we know a lot of this is not correct. But before he came up with this theory, he had trouble treating chronic diseases. After he came up with this theory, he had a lot of clinical success. So what our question should be is what did he do differently with a patient before and after this theory? Because whatever gave him more clinical success, we want, right? <laughs> we want more clinical success. So really, what I believe changed is his idea of totality, okay? So by totality, I mean the different symptoms that a homeopath will include into their case and try and prescribe a remedy for, okay? So if someone comes in with chronic fatigue that has pain in the sternum, brain fog at 5 p.m., chills at 8 p.m., but also has seasonal allergies, heart palpitations, migraines, menstrual problems, that kind of thing, today, what a homeopath would do is consider all of that as potentially part of a large totality, meaning all of these things would be part of one disease process. And we would want one remedy that covers all of those things. Okay, we want something that's going to cover the chronic fatigue symptoms, you know, the bone pain, the chill, the tiredness. But we would also want something that also covers the person's migraines and menstrual problems, right? All one remedy, whole thing, very holistic. So that wasn't necessarily always the case. I believe before Hahnemann came up with his theory of chronic diseases, when he would take a case, it would just be a bit more focused. So it would be more complaint specific. So that he might just look at the chronic fatigue symptoms, for example, just the bone pain and the chill and the tiredness, and come up with a remedy that was just for that. And he just didn't have a lot of success. So then he comes up with his chronic disease theory. And he says, why don't I go back in time, essentially, right? 
So what hap- So if you see this as the end result of a process, what happened before? Seasonal allergies. Okay, tell me about seasonal, al- seasonal allergies, which in his view would have been a, a symptom of latent sora, probably. Um, and before the allergies, what, ha- what was going on? Migraines. Okay, tell me about the migraines. And then you just keep adding these complaints to your idea of a totality. And then he would prescribe a remedy that worked on all of those, and suddenly he had great success, okay? Now, what I have not been able to find, which if anybody knows, please send me, because really I've been looking, (laughs) is like exactly how many complaints he would have included both before and after. So I, I know he's got case books out there. I don't know that there, I haven't been able to find any online yet, but I'm looking. They'd be in German anyway, so it'd take me 10 years to Google Translate my way through, but uh, whatever. So, <laughs> so all I I am sure of is that his idea of totality got bigger, but I don't really know where it started and where it ended. And I know of practitioners who, um, they, they sort of run the gamut when it comes to defining what a totality is. I think it's probably one of the big things that is still debated in the profession today, maybe not overtly, but... <laughs> but sort of, I don't know, covertly. Uh, you know, some practitioners will spend like five hours with a patient and want to know everything that happened to them since they were born. And like some will even go into like what their mom's pregnancy was like and what symptoms did mom have when they were pregnant with the patient and stuff like that. And the idea is to get this totality of everything that's happened to this person since birth and then prescribe a remedy that works on all of that. But then there are also practitioners who will, you know, take a case for 30 minutes and have great success that way. And they just sort of go on, so what's going on now? They take the case of that. If they, let's say after that, still have three potential remedies, they're like, all right, what else is going on? What else can you tell me? And they're like, oh, I also have migraines. It's like, great, tell me about the migraines. And then maybe after the migraines, you're down to two remedies. And then it's like, what else is going on? Oh, I have allergies. Okay, tell me about the allergies. And then you pres- after taking the case of the allergies, you're like, all right, great, I got one remedy for you. <laughs> and then the case is done, right? So they're not necessarily ne- trying to go back until infancy. And I have heard of people having great success on both ends of the spectrum and everywhere in between. So I don't know necessarily what method is best. But so I hope you get the idea of this totality and how do how do we decide what a totality is and that really what happened with Kahneman's miasms is that our idea of totality got a lot bigger and our profession got a lot more holistic. Kahneman's theory really doesn't necessarily mean that we have to treat for this idea of family inherited diseases or anything like that but that our totality is a lot bigger than it used to be. Okay? Hope that helped. So, till next time.